Florida, in just 14 days, in just 14 days, you and I can begin to bring some badly needed sunshine to Washington, D.C. This is the Sunshine State. You can help bring some sunshine to D.C. That's the good news. But we're going to have to work for it. We're going to have to struggle for it. We're going to have to fight for every single one of those 14 days to bring our country the change that we need. Now, I'm, I'm hopeful about the outcome. We were thrilled this weekend when a great American statesman, General Colin Powell, joined our cause. But we can't let up, Florida, and we won't. Because one thing we know is that change never comes without a fight. In the final days of campaigns, the, the say anything, do anything type of politics too often takes over. We've seen it before, and we're seeing it again now. The ugly phone calls, the misleading mail and television ads, the careless, outrageous comments, all aimed at working keeping us from working together, all aimed at stopping the change that we need. I mean, it's gotten so bad that even Senator McCain's running mate, Sarah Palin, denounced his tactics. You know, you really have to work hard to violate Governor Palin's standards on negative campaigning. This morning, I had the opportunity to catch a little of Senator McCain's speech in Pennsylvania on TV. Anyone see that? It, 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 was, uh, it was pretty remarkable. He, he, he has decided to completely make up, just fabricate, this notion that I've been attacking Joe the Plumber. Uh, let, let, let me tell you something. Even, even yesterday, just yesterday, Joe the plumber himself said that wasn't true. I've got nothing but love for Joe the plumber. That's why I want to give him a tax cut. <laughs> and yet, and still, Joe, uh, John McCain is still out there just just saying this stuff, just making it up. He knows full well that I will cut taxes for all the working Joes, all the small business people across this country to help them pursue their dreams. Because I want to help rebuild the middle class that has taken such a hit these past eight years under the policies of George Bush with a big assist from John McCain. Then, Senator McCain and Sarah Palin called me socialistic. Now, first of all, I think it's hard to imagine that Colin Powell and Warren Buffett would endorse somebody socialistic. Apparently, what they consider socialistic is my plan to roll back the Bush tax cuts on the very wealthiest Americans tax cuts that John McCain himself said in 2000 were irresponsible and prevented middle class tax relief. That's what he said then. He was right then. I'm right now. I want, I want to give a tax cut to 95% of working families. John McCain says, well, only 40 percent of people pay income taxes, so you must want to give welfare to people. I said, no, 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 no. People may only, some, only some people may pay income tax, but everybody pays payroll tax and sales tax and property taxes, and they need relief too. The janitor and the secretary, people who aren't making a lot of money, they deserve a break too. I don't think there's anything wrong with giving them some tax relief. I don't know what John McCain's talking about. Apparently, Senator McCain's decided 
that if he can't beat our ideas, then he's just going to make up some ideas and run against those. Well, what we need now is not straw men. We don't need misleading charges. What we need is honest leadership and real change. And Miami, that's why I'm running for President of the United States of America. This campaign has to be about the problems facing the American people, because this is a moment of great uncertainty for America. The economic crisis we face is the worst since the Great Depression. Businesses large and small are finding it impossible to get loans. That means they can't buy new equipment or hire new workers or even make payroll for the workers they have. We've lost more than 750,000 jobs so far this year. And we just learned that here in Florida, we lost nearly 11,000 jobs just in September. Wages are lower than they've been in a decade, at a time when the cost of health care and college have never been higher. It's getting harder and harder to make the mortgage or fill up your gas tank or put food on the table or even keep the electricity on at the end of the month. At this rate, the question isn't whether you are better off than you were four years ago. The question is, are you better off than you were four weeks ago? So I know these are difficult times, Florida. I know many of you are worried. But hear me now. I believe we can steer ourselves out of this crisis. Because I believe in this country. Because I believe in you. I believe in the American people. We are the United States of America. And we are a nation that has faced down war and depression, great challenges and great threats. And at each and every moment, we have risen to meet these challenges, not as Democrats, not as Republicans, not as independents, but as Americans, with resolve and with confidence and with a fundamental belief that here in America, our destiny is not written for us, it's written by us. We decide. That's who we are. And that's the country we need to be right now. That's why I'm running for President of the United States of America. But Florida, Florida, I know this. It will take a new direction. It will take new leadership in Washington. It will take a real change in the policies and politics of the last eight years. That's what this election is all about. The truth is, the financial crisis we're facing didn't just spring up full-blown overnight. It's been a long time coming. The warning signs have been very clear. While President Bush and Senator McCain were already ready to move heaven and earth to address the crisis on Wall Street, President Bush has failed to address the crisis on Main Street. Senator McCain has failed to fully acknowledge that crisis. Instead of common sense solutions, month after month, they've offered li little more than willful ignorance and, and wishful thinking and outdated ideologies. Nine months ago, back in January, I called for a stimulus plan to provide immediate relief for states, along with tax rebates to get money directly to middle class families, and a foreclosure prevention fund to help people keep their homes. Senator McCain, on the other hand, insisted that the fundamentals of the economy were strong. His advisors openly mocked the idea of a stimulus package. One referred to it as borrowing money from the Chinese and dropping it from helicopters. Another dismissed it as junk. Last August, I called for a jobs and growth fund to help states put people to work building and repairing our roads and our bridges and our schools. And I called for $25 billion to help states and local governments pay for services and avoid raising property taxes, because tax increases are the last thing families need in this economy. But President Bush and John McCain thought that a second st stimulus package was unnecessary. 
Today, after nine straight months of job losses, when our Federal Reserve Chairman says he supports another stimulus to get our economy moving, something even the Bush administration is open to, John McCain's economic advisor made it clear that John McCain isn't ready to support a stimulus. He's taking what he says is a wait-and-see approach. Instead of offering a real plan to boost our economy, John McCain's offered a proposal that does nothing to create jobs, nothing to help families with falling wages and mounting bills, and next to nothing to help people stay in their homes. Instead, he's calling for a housing proposal that's nothing but a $300 billion bailout for Wall Street banks. Well, I've got news for John McCain. Hard-working families who've been hit hard by this economic crisis, folks who can't pay their mortgages or their medical bills or send their kids to college, they can't afford to wait and see. They can't afford to go to the back of the line behind CEOs and Wall Street banks that are already getting help. Right here and right now, they need help. That's why I'm running for President of the United States of America. You know, recently, recently, I heard Senator McCain say, I'm more concerned with who gets your piece of the pie than with growing the pie. But let's be absolutely clear. After eight years of Bush-McCain economics, the pie is shrinking. And what's left of the pie has been eaten by millionaires and billionaires. Everybody here wants some pie. We want to grow the pie, and then we want a slice of the pie. <laughs> everybody deserves. Look, everybody, everybody deserves a chance at the American dream. You know, with, with, with Bush's policies, what we've had is lower wages, declining incomes, plummeting home values, rising unemployment. That's not growing the pie. So my opponent's doing his best to change the subject. He wants to try to distract your attention from the economy. His, his campaign actually said a couple of weeks ago that they were going to launch a series of attacks on my character because they said, if we keep on talking about the economy, we're going to lose. And I have to say, that's a promise that John McCain has kept. He's been on the attack. That's what you do when you're out of ideas, when you're out of touch, and you're running out of time. So I can take a few more weeks of attacks from John McCain. What you can't take is another four years of failed economic policies. That's why you're going to the polls. It's time to turn the page on eight years of economic policies that put Wall Street before Main Street. We need policies that grow our economy from the bottom up so that every American everywhere has the chance to succeed. Not just the person who owns the factory, but the men and women working on the factory floor. Not just the CEO, but the secretary and the janitor. If we've learned anything from this economic crisis, it's that we're all connected. We're all in this together. We'll rise or fall as one nation, as one people. So that financial rescue plan, hold on, everybody all right over here? Okay. The financial rescue plan that passed Congress that was necessary to help ease this credit crisis. It was important that we made sure that banks could still provide loans to companies that were getting into trouble. But if we're going to rebuild this economy from the bottom up, then we need an immediate rescue plan for the middle class. And that's what I'll offer as President of the United States. That starts, that starts with tax relief. There's been a lot of talk about taxes in this campaign. But the truth is, the truth is that my opponent and I are both proposing tax cuts 
The difference is he wants to give a $700,000 tax cut to the average Fortune 500 CEO. I want to put a middle class tax cut in the pockets of 95% of workers and their families. My opponent doesn't want you to know this, but under my plan, tax rates will actually be less than they were under Ronald Reagan. Now, it's true I want to roll back the Bush tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans and go back to the rate they paid under Bill Clinton. John McCain may call that socialism, but he doesn't remember that he opposed those Bush tax cuts. He needs to remember that he said they were irresponsible. He needs to remember that in good conscience he said he couldn't support those tax cuts. That middle class Americans needed tax relief. He was right then and I am right now and we've got to meet. I want everybody to be clear. Everybody raise their hand. How many people? No, no, hold on a second. How many people make less than a quarter million dollars a year? All right, I hope all the cameras got that. If you make less than a quarter million dollars a year, and that includes 98% of small business owners, you will not see your taxes increase not one dime. Not your payroll tax, not your income tax, not your capital gains tax, not a single tax. That's my commitment to you to create more American jobs. I want to stop giving tax breaks to companies that ship jobs overseas. Let's give those tax breaks to companies that are creating American jobs right here in Florida, right here in the United States of America. I want to make sure that we're creating good jobs right here. And I'll help make small businesses. I, I, I will help help small businesses create the jobs that we need by eliminating capital gains taxes for them, giving them emergency loans to keep their doors open, to hire new workers, and we'll ensure that we act quickly to help struggling homeowners stay in their homes. And that's especially important here in Florida, where foreclosures are up 30 percent over the last year. I want to help responsible homeowners refinance their mortgages on affordable terms, put in place a three-month moratorium on foreclosures to give folks the breathing room they need to get back on their feet. And I won't let banks and lenders off the hook when it was their greed and irresponsibility that got us into this mess in the first place. We should not be bailing out Wall Street. We should be restoring opportunity on Main Street. That's what I'll do when I'm president. Now, these are the steps that we have to take right now to start getting our economy back on track. But we also need a new set of priorities to grow our economy and create jobs over the long term. If I'm president, we're going to invest $15 billion a year in renewable sources of energy to create 5 million new green jobs over the next decade, jobs that can't be outsourced, jobs building solar panels and wind turbines building fuel-efficient cars, not in Japan, not in South Korea, but right here in the United States of America. We can end our dependence on Middle East oil and save our planet in the bargain. And I'm also going to put two million more Americans to work, rebuilding our roads and our bridges, our schools, laying broadband lines in rural communities, setting up a new electricity grid to help get renewable energy to people who need it, it's time to build an American infrastructure for the 21st century. And if people ask, how are we going to do all this? You just tell them, if we can spend $10 billion a month in Iraq, we can spend some of that money rebuilding the United States of America. And if, as president, I will finally fix the problem of our health care system. We've been talking about it for too long. 
This issue is personal for me. My mother died of cancer at the age of 53. I'll never forget how she spent those final months of her life lying in a hospital bed arguing with insurance companies who were saying that her cancer was a pre-existing condition and maybe they wouldn't have to pay for her treatment. When I'm president, we're going to make sure those insurance companies can never do that again. My health care plan will make sure insurance companies can't discriminate against those who are sick and those who need care the most. And if you have health insurance, the only thing that changes is we're going to lower your premiums. But if you don't have health insurance, you'll be able to buy the same kind of health insurance that members of Congress, including John McCain, give themselves. And we'll invest in preventive care and new technology to finally lower the cost of health care for families and businesses and the entire economy. That's the change we need. As President, I will give every child in Florida and every child in America the skills and the knowledge they need to compete in this new global economy. We will not allow countries to outteach us today so they can outcompete us tomorrow. Every child deserves a world-class education. And that means investing in early childhood education. That means recruiting an army of new teachers, paying them higher salaries, giving them more support, maintaining higher standards, increasing accountability. And there are a lot of young people here today, so I want to make a deal with you. My opponent's chief economic advisor said, well, we can't afford to help on college affordability because we can't give money to every interest group out there. I don't think young people in America are an interest group. I think they're our future. And that's why I'm going to make a deal with young people in America. If you are willing to serve your country or your community, work in a homeless shelter, work in a veteran's home, join the military, join the Peace Corps, whatever you decide to do, if you give back to your country or your community, then we will make sure that each and every one of you get the money you need for tuition, no ifs, ands, or buts. You invest in America, we'll invest in you. Together, we're going to march this country forward. Now, let me, be, let me be clear. The change we need won't come easy. It won't come quick. They've dug a deep hole for us. We're going to have to work our way through a lot of these problems. We're all going to need to tighten our belt, and we'll all need to sacrifice. We'll all need to pull our own weight. You know, I can put more money into education, but I can't be a parent I can't turn off the TV set. You've got to do that. I can't make your kids do your homework. You've got to do that. Fathers, I can't be involved in your child's life. You've got to be involved. That's your responsibility. I can put more money into, into developing new renewable energy sources, but I'm going to need all of you. We'll need each other to turn off the lights and, and become more energy efficient. And, and make sure that we're, we're all checking the pressure on our tires and, and taking all the small steps that together add up to a more energy efficient America. Now more than ever, we are in this together. At a defining moment like this, we don't have the luxury of relying on the same political games, the same political tactics that are used every election to divide us, to make us afraid of one another. With the challenges and the crises we face right now, we can't afford to divide this country by class or by region, by who we are or what policies we support. There are no real or fake parts of this country. We're not separated by the pro-America and anti-America parts of this country. We all love this country, no matter where we live no matter where we come from. There are patriots who supported this war in Iraq, and there are patriots who opposed it. There are patriots who believe in democratic policies, and there are patriots who believe in Republican policies. The men and women of Florida, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Native American, young, old, rich, poor, gay, straight, people from all across America, they serve on our battlefields, and they may be Democrats, 
and Republicans and independents, but they have fought together and bled together, and some have died together under the same flag. They have not served a red America or a blue America. They've served the United States of America. That's what we have to remember in this election. Miami. Miami, we have always been at our best when our leadership called us to look past our differences and come together. Leadership that rallied the entire country around a common purpose, a higher purpose. I'm running for president because that's the country we need to be right now. This country and the dream it represents, what that flag represents, it's being tested in a way we haven't seen in nearly a century. The future generations will judge us by how we responded to this test. Will they say this was a time when America lost its way, when it lost its nerve, when we all became selfish and turned on each other and succumbed to the fear tactics and our own petty differences? Or will they say this was another one of those moments where America overcame, when we battled back from adversity, when we recognized we had a common stake in each other and each other's success? Yeah, I know that many of you are cynical and fed up with politics. I understand you're disappointed and even angry with your leaders, and you have every right to be. But despite all this, I ask of you what's always been asked of the American people in times of difficulty. I ask you to believe. Believe in yourselves, believe in each other, and believe in the future we can build together. We can't fail now. Not when we have a crisis to solve and an economy to save. Not when there's so many Americans without jobs and without homes. Not when there are families who can't afford a doctor or to send their kids to college or pay their bills at the end of the month. Not when there's a generation that's counting on us to give them the same opportunities, the same chances that we had for ourselves. You know, as I look out over this crowd, I think to myself, everybody here has got a story, and somewhere in their past, You've got a parent or a grandparent who said to themselves, you know, maybe I can't go to college, but if I work hard, then maybe my son or daughter can go to college. Everybody here has a parent or a grandparent or a great-grandparent who said, maybe I've got to work in this, this tough, dirty job, but if I work hard enough and if I save enough, maybe my child or my grandchild, they'll be able to start a business of their own. Everybody here has a story. Maybe your parents or your grandparents or your great-grandparents came here from another country. Maybe people came from a country that wasn't giving freedom of speech and freedom of religion, and people wanted libertad. And they said to themselves, you know, if we go to that country across the water, then maybe we can have freedom for our children and our grandchildren. And maybe some of you even though your parents and grandparents were born here, maybe they didn't have the right to vote. But they said to themselves, you know what? If I work hard, if I'm willing to march and struggle, then maybe someday my child might be able to run for Congress, might be able to run for the United States Senate, might be able to run for President of the United States of America. That's what this election's about. That's what the American dream's about. That's what we're fighting for. And if you will stand with me, if you will organize with me and make phone calls with me, if you'll struggle with me over these next 14 days, I promise you, we will not just win Florida, but we will win this general election. And you and I together will restore the dream. We will change this country. You and I together will change this country and we'll change the world. God bless you and God bless the United States of America.